So we have been tidying up, I promise. Uh, we definitely have. Shifted some stuff from there. We're a bit tidier here, need a sweep. Ah, oh, a bit of clobber on there. What's this? Trestles. I've got to get the aeroplane a little bit lower. So I've got to level uh, the airplane up uh, to be able to set the uh, tailplane, etc. It's got to be level, and the trouble is, is that at this height off the ground, if I level the back, the tailplane touches the light. So, I'll try for the trestles. So one of the next jobs is to uh, just set this tailplane and obviously uh, that's set to an angle um, that is measured, you'll probably see a spirit level up there um, between those two wing hang points. So uh, that's a level, you can also do the bungee trusses. Um, so in order to do that, I've got to level the aeroplane so that all the measurements that are taken will be, uh, you know, from the perpendicular um, and or, or from the horizontal. So we've got, you know, uh, the same angle throughout. Uh, the issue I've got is, though, because of this table, it's too high. If I level the tail up so that the aeroplane is horizontally level, the, the tailplane will... Uh, go through that light so i've got to lower the front down and the way that i'm going to do that is get rid of the table and i've bought a couple of uh, trusses sorry i've bought a couple of vessels uh there's one in the box there's one unboxed there's one just being finished being made so a couple of trestles and uh, so we can progress so the trestles are in place Move the table, got a spare table now. I'm gonna put a bench drill on there. Now the trestles are in place, uh, we can check the angle. Um, that's about level. Okay, level that up. Right then, so we've got the elevator in. As you can see, it'll move up and down. It swivels on uh, the six bolt at the back. We've got to do a series of holes. I guess the, answer, the reason behind that will become apparent later, but we start at the top, we have to move this all the way to the top, we've got a 6 mil drill, and apparently we have to use the ears as a guide, and we're going to be drilling 6 mil hole. I don't need no one to say you're complicated Cause I knew from the start this might be overrated Okay, so we've got to do a series of these As we come down, all the way down to the bottom Now you see what we've done is we've drilled a series of holes This is the elevator Sorry this is the tailplane and you can see there's a 6mm bolt in the back and then these tabs are able to move up and down and what we've done is we've moved it to the top position, drilled a hole, brung it down so that the top of the tab is just touching the hole, drilled another one and we repeat this going down. Now what should happen um, is the center one supposed to be the neutral and that's about three to three and a half degrees um, with the nose down or three and a half degrees with the front of the tailplane down uh, which it is I've checked I can't show you because I checked with my phone that I'm videoing with we are in the neutral position and uh, that's fastened up so we've got the elevator to put on the back and we've also got some struts 
Uh, they come from down here. Uh, up here somewhere. Is it on here? I imagine so. And uh, those struts will give it some, uh, some support. On here is just roughly dry fitted the elevator, which is on these pins. I'm not going to pull it too much because I'll put uh, forces on these pins. I don't want to bend them because they haven't got, uh, I haven't put the sleevings in here yet that goes in there. So five of those pins, uh, we'll talk about sleeving. And I've done a similar thing, pins, I can't find it in the viewfinder, there we go. Pin there, one, two, one at the bottom, I don't find it, get out of the way. Three, those are for the rudder, and a rudder left and right, and this, there's a stop, limited stop, on the bottom here, uh, that prevents it being possible for you to uh, put in enough rudder so that the rudder catches the elevator. That can't happen. That could cause control jam, um, which is not good. So you'll see we, we have clearance between the two there. Okay, so this is the dry fit. Um, kind of looks good, that black and yellow, eh? Uh, <laughs> you don't see these colors underneath though, so it's not, it's not the final airplane colour. I haven't kind of made my mind up yet. Uh, um, there's been a few choices and discussions about colours. But I tell you what, if you do me a favour, um, tell me what colours you prefer. I've thought all sorts, from, you know, black and yellow, um, which it kind of is, but you'll not see that, that's internal. Uh, purple, which is one of my favourite colours. Uh, I thought orange. I don't know. You tell, tell me what you think. Something that's uh, a little bit different. Okay. Right then. So last time I recorded this, I got the camera set in um, product display mode, which meant that everything in the foreground it got. Um, it came into focus. It's for showcasing things. Um, so I kept losing focus. I've just reset things, kind of figuring out how the camera works. Uh, you'll see here then. So this is the control assembly. It's basically basically like Meccano. Um, you have these uh, sort of ball joints here, connected with washers and and just bolts, nuts and bolts. Um, that's a connecting rod it just goes through to the one on the other side then you have this bushing which we haven't flat wheeled out correctly yet uh, and that kind of is for the forward and backwards elevator rotation so you've got left and right for the ailerons goes to that push rod and forwards and backwards which is basically up and down isn't it? its pitch for the elevator control so I'll come round, so if you come round you can see, here we go, look, faster focus there, how's that? Uh, you can see there's the assembly, I've set it up, the control rod in the middle, blurry finger, uh, to make sure that both of these sticks, control sticks are parallel. We come to, come round fast, this side then. There's a control stick, and there you'll see the other bush bearing thing. That's the other side of that control rod that goes through. And then you have another little um, ball joint that goes onto the bell crank that we spoke about. So the idea is left and right, okay, it turns that uh, sort of lateral movement into a longitudinal movement. Uh, and it pushes and pulls this pull rod. Uh, it has to go third hole in from the outside, second hole in from the center. And so it focus, that push rod goes all the way to the back. Let's come around to the back. And you see we have this dog leg in there, comes to the back. The ball joint's connected to the back here. And this is to the aileron flap mixer. You've heard me speak about that before. It's kind of this assembly. 
so as we push pull that we we move see the other side uh, this flap this sorry this aileron assembly in here which I haven't spoke much about yet there's a bushing so this came separate but on here that bolt bolts on to a nylon cylinder which is not fastened to that center piece there it, it's allowed this rotates uh, around it uh, and I had to sand those down I had to kind of ream out or flat wheel out the inside of this diameter and I had to sand that that little um, bearing there uh, we had some issues with that as I'll tell you about that a little bit later you probably hear the goose in the background The next thing is, and you remember the flap, that's the flap handle, you remember we fitted that, uh, has a similar kind of arrangement, goes onto a ball joint there, we've got to cut that because you can see it touches the frame, so we need to trim that off, but that comes backwards, goes onto that part, if we get it focused on the right bit, that part there of the flap assembly so the idea is the idea is when we pull this you see it lifts the whole assembly okay uh, and that adds increased angle of attack to both ailerons which is a uh, flap effect uh, so increasing the drag and uh, increasing the angle of attack of the of the uh, of the wing um, so to give more lift so next bit then is between here there will be a control rod that goes on here that's going to be um, connecting to the elevator we'll go and see the elevator so I've really been dry fitting the control assembly in the fuselage and the control assembly it, it's like Meccano there's a little bit of work to do um, some of the work is just involved uh, in sanding, reaming, flat wheeling out bushings and bearings. There's two main ones that I'm dealing with at the moment. One is uh, the sort of the bearing holders or, or these bushings that hold the control assembly, you know, the, the forward back movement. Um, I've done some flat wheeling, they're still a little bit tight. I haven't finished doing that. I thought I'd dry fit it the way it is, just to make sure I'm happy to continue taking out more meat. Can you hear the goose? It's eating my bike. Goose, oi! We call it Jinx. What are you doing, goose? What are you doing to that cheat? Why are the bikes falling over? Oi, stop eating my bike. Why are you eating my bike? Oi. So, um, that's part of what's to do. There's also uh, another bushing and that's in the, uh, the mixer unit. You know the mixer unit that mixes the action of the aileron and the flap? Uh, there's a, a, a bushing there, a bearing there. And what that basically is, is a nylon cylinder that's bolted um, onto a face. And then a tube can go over the top and rotate around that cylinder. Uh, and that's how the flap and the aileron mixers uh, are connected together. That meant flat wheeling out the inside of the internal diameter and also sanding the external diameter of, of the this nylon cylinder. Um, it kind of fits about right now. The issue you have with that is, is friction, although I have bought some, oh, it's over there, some of that ACF 50 um, lubricant. Uh, there was a bit of friction. The friction transfers uh, forces from uh, the flap control to the aileron control. So you have to get th things about right so that there's no friction transfer of forces. 
Um, I've got everything about where I like it, but I've run into one problem and that's all the taking on and off of the assembly that's on a captive nylon nut on the inside of this nylon barrel. Um, it started turning inside the nylon assembly. So it's actually fastened on right now, perfectly, really tight, but I can't undo it. So when I undo it now, the uh, the nylon nut is just turning on the inside and, and I can't remove it. It doesn't matter, I don't need to remove it. It works perfectly, that's fine. But you know, uh, at some stage in the future, I might have to remove it. And I don't want to end up with a major problem um, in, in a year's time. So what I've done is, are you come to, yeah. Bring one of the, the things with you off the gate, you know, with the flat end on it. No, you lost it. Yeah, I've got one missing, it's just disappeared. I don't know. That, you know that's worrying because you know what that means. What? Twatador, yeah. Twatador that's the dog. What are we doing talking to someone? Yeah. <laughs> All right. The goose just wants to eat that blue thing. I know. That's not water, you dickhead. Right. So the cylinder with the lock nut that turns inside, and it, it, it works fine now, but in the future, I, I might want to remove that. I don't want to end up with that problem. So I've ordered a new one. It's coming um, with the next set of bits and pieces from KFA Safari in South Africa. Uh, so I'll just redo that one. I want to make sure I can remove it when I want to remove it. So, um, you know, it, it, sort that out now. I don't want a problem later on. So it's all the dry fit. As you can see, we've dry fitted around. We've even dry fitted the elevator. We've dry fitted, dry fitted the, uh, the stabilizer, the, you know, the horizontal stabilizer, the tailplane at the back. A lot of the, uh, the control assembly then is like Meccano. Uh, what we're basically doing is uh, a lot of it is control rods like this. Um, this is actually uh, not a control rod. This is one uh, one of the stabilizers. Um, sorry, one of the uh, the struts for the stabilizer. But it's the same principle. The control rods are exactly the same. Um, they are threaded, and into the threaded end, you put um, a ball joint, a little nut on the end. And then the ball joints fastened to, to various fittings around with a washer at each side um, and, and a nut and a bolt. Uh, so it's basically like Meccano, uh, apart from those two, two bushings, it's, it's basically like Meccano. Uh, and it's just dry fitting everything. There, there is some technicality that's going to come into things in the future because everything's got to be set up at the right angle. It's very important that, that things are set up perfectly so that nothing can jam, so the end stops are in place uh, to prevent banging on control rods and, and such like. Um, but for now, dry fitted so I know where things go and I can get my head around the assembly. So jobs left to do that I'll be doing soon is I, I've got to fit these struts to the tailplane. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. I've got to flat wheel out those bearings for the for the forward control column. I've got to replace that bushing on, on the side. And uh, then at some stage I'll line everything up and swap the six mil normal nuts for the nylox. The problem with nylox is you can't use a nylock more than once, not safely. Uh, so once you put a nylock on, if you realize you're in the wrong position, you have to take the nylock off again, that goes in the bin. Uh, but a normal six mil nut you can reuse, although you can't <laughs> you can't use it on the control assembly. So it's dry fitted with normal six mil nuts, and what we'll do is remove those six mil nuts and put nylocks on when we're happy where everything goes. Another job that I've got to do uh, is there's a bit of drilling, so I'm actually sat here waiting for a bench drill to come. I, I don't have one, uh, so I've ordered one because I've got to drill some holes through the control uh, assembly, through the, uh, 
so that I can put the uh, so I can bolt the control stick. So the control sticks are just placed into position at the moment, uh, but I've got to put a horizontal hole through there and bolt them together. Uh, I think there's a drill hole that needs to be done um, with uh, the struts. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, it can be done with a hand drill, but a bench drill is better. And there's also a hole to be put in the push-pull tube that goes to the elevator. And so I think that's one of the next jobs. These, as I said, are the struts um, that's going to hold the elevator tight. I spoke about that. Uh, the ball joint will go to the bottom, uh, to those angles at the bottom. This, the top bit then, um, a 30 millimeters of this, I've got to flatten, so I'll probably use the vise. We flatten that, we put a bend in it, and we drill a hole, and that is then fastened to the bushing uh, that goes on the horizontal stabilizer. So, um, that's the next job that I'm going to be doing. I don't need no one to say you're complicated Cause I knew from the start this might be overrated It's so typical you wanna give it one more try Right, I almost made a mistake. So here's one of the uh, struts for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, on that end, we've got a ball joint with a lock nut. Um, what, I, what I didn't realise initially, I was measuring 10, 20, 30 centimetres from the end. But part of this is, is waste. And what you actually do is you fasten the ball joint onto uh, the aeroplane and then measure to where a little bushing where the bolt's going to go which is there um, that longer line a bit wobbly but it was a longer line and then you measure 10 centimeters in and 20 centimeters out 20 centimeters out is the external length so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut that okay so that's cut uh, we're using the soft jaws of course on the vise Right, now what I do is I have to flatten this end piece. So I use the, the jaws, uh, the hard jaws of the vise to do this. So trying to keep it parallel, um, we go to this, uh, it's just hidden there, but it's the uh, 10 centimeter line. It's 30 centimeters in from the end. So 10 centimeters in from where we measured the bushing. I'll show you that shortly. Now what we're going to do is just clamp up the uh, clamp up the vise, and um, it should flatten almost. I'll show you what we do next. Now I've got a small vise, and I'm not very really tough, so I'm just using a bit of a levering bar just to really try and um, and squash that down. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't break the vise now. It's almost squashed. Let me just try one more turn. Hang on. Yeah, so I think I've squashed that about as squashed as it will go. Now that's flattened. Now if you'll notice, that's lined up. I've lined that up with, uh, with this ball joint and it has six threads showing and the lock nut on. And um, the idea is keep that straight and then I'm gonna put a bend in this so we're just going to pull this nice and gently and we're going to put a bend and i'm just going to guess about there i haven't measured the angle but i just measure it against the airplane and then we'll see how that fits this is where the ball joints fasten i've had to drill those holes in there by the way six mils and then that's going to come from there and go to here so just just lining it up, that looks about about the right angle. That was a bit of a lucky first guess. The others took a bit more. Right, so I'm just gonna fasten things on down here. So as you can see, that's just about parallel. I maybe could put another degree or two in there, uh, which I might just do, but um, that's about right. And then we'll mark the hole and then we'll drill it and fasten it.
Well, that's it in. So that's the ball joint, not fastened yet, but the strut comes up, uh, comes to there. We've rounded the edges and we've drilled and we can fasten. Of course, there's a bit of primering and paintwork to be done. Um, but that's basically how the strut goes. That's three of them in, if you didn't realize. Gotta get a bit of practice first. Um, one more to go. So, dry fitted, uh, that's four on. Those are the struts for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, they're not tightened, we're already, uh, you can feel how much more solid that is which is good because you don't want that falling off. Hey. Also, dry fitted, we've drilled the holes um, to locate the control stick. Um, oh, you can see all the grabbing fires down there. Now, what did I do that with? Just check this out. New toy. I got a new toy, a bit of a mess, but I got a new toy and that's what I did the uh, the tubes with, like a new toy. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Sun's going down. Um, gonna go in, maybe have a whiskey. So we, we're making progress again, bit by bit, they say, little at a time. And we are making progress. Very cool. Anyway, don't forget, thanks a lot for for keeping up with this fat dude and his, uh, his aeroplane build, his bush plane aeroplane build. Um, please do give us a, a thumbs up. Uh, I, I do want to know from you though, if you can enter into the comments, your ideas for colour scheme. Um, what your sort of favourite colours are, what, what ideas you got for the colour scheme. If you leave those down below, that would be great. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.